most of our most of our applications are directly used by most of the developers around the world and most of the startups right now in the United States. So basically, first of all, who I am, my name is Rommel. I work with uh, large servers since about six years. Uh, I started on Stratelecom in a in a large 550 servers physical environment. Then I moved to AWS three years ago, where I started with Wacky.tv and then moved to Trescale to help them scale their cloud architecture to allow us to manage all the traffic from all the applications. I worked with CF Engine 2 for two years in, at Extra Telecom, and then I discovered Puppet, and now I want to puppetize everything. Uh, I'm obsessed about config management, and I use Emacs. Uh, what Trescal does, basically we provide all the tools that developers need to scale their APIs. We provide them with traffic reports, um, <laughs> traffic report, API administration, and traffic management, authorization keys, and everything, so they can scale their APIs. We help them to make that process from going private APIs to public APIs a little bit easier. So uh, what does a scaling stand for? A scaling, see, if you see a wiki, the Wikipedia, you can see that it's the ability of a system, a network of processes to adapt to the different, different, different capacities and accommodate, and accommodate their resources to the growth. If you say this to an operations engineer, he will tell you that it, does, it only applies to servers and systems, but at the end, it, does, it also matters to the developers. It also matters how we develop uh, puppet models, how we develop config management, and how we do our work. We have to find a way that developing models to our puppet envir environment can be easy and can be scalable. So we have to ask basically three questions, which are, how many people are going, uh, do we need to scale our, our, our architecture? Uh, in the case of Trescale, everybody has this role. Uh, everybody in the development team and the operations team have the role of scaling the architecture. They, want to, they have to know how everything is built, how everything works, and if something fails, everybody should be able to, to solve it. We also want to know how many environments and systems we can maintain, our team. At the operations department or the operations team, we are two people right now. So basically, we are in charge of, de of developing puppet models and developing config management. So we can make it easily for other parts of the company to modify the production environments, like using Hira, using PuppetDB, and other tools, without being scared at night when somebody does it. And this comes to the, third quest to the third question. Can we delegate configurations to other part of the teams? I don't want a developer modifying a puppet model at night or something uh, and being scared that he's modifying some manifest or some class or some, or some resource. So the easy way to do that it is using Hira and PuppetDB so they can change parameters over there and easily apply to production without changing the logic behind behind our architecture. So for this, we're using Puppet Dynamic Environments. Uh, they were introduced a couple of years ago. And the purpose of environments is that you can test all the configurations before it goes to production. At the moment, we have around four environments. And everybody who wants to test a new feature can create a new environment easily. Um, and the cool thing about this is that they can even, even test and experiment on their own without harming the, the other environments. Um, the base environment at Triscale are production and preview, which are production, obviously production, and preview functions as a QA. If something is failing for some reason in production, we can deploy pre a preview stage, a preview environment, and see what is happening. Or if we want to test something before it goes to production, we use preview, and then we pass it to production. 
In order to do this, we decided that the best, the best way to develop our environments was this way. So we can use uh, our own workflow for this. If you see on the internet, most of the sites will recommend you that you use branching, branching releases for all the environments. So you can have like a branch for production, branch for preview, branch for each one of your, of your environments. But we discovered that this way is really easy to, to get branches outdated, and it's really hard to make all the, all the models on the master branch uh, reliable. So we figured out this way so we can have only, master, only one master branch and keep the workflow that we have in the whole company for all applications, which is the feature branch. In order to do this, this is the basic configuration that you will see on the internet where you change all, only the environments where is located the, the configurations. But we did a little tweak where we changed the manifest so we can launch a different manifest for different environments. We can have production, .pp, staging, preview, whatever. And we, are, and we have all the code in the same branch. And what we do is in the production.pp, we launch any one of the, of the manifests that we're going to use. We're also using uh, environments on Hira, so we can have environments and configuration specifics for each one of them. If we have an application that needs some special configuration, we can have it on, on each one of the stages. And everybody can modify that, previous code review and pull requests and everything, but they can even test it before doing that on their own feature branches. For example, if somebody wants to launch more listeners and more workers, then you have to modify the Hira file. As Thomas said, uh, with the Hira files on each one of the models, this will be a little bit easier. So this is one of the, one of the things that we're going to try to implement in the future. Um, when we talk about dynamic environments, we want to talk also about the gear flow that our team is going to follow. Inside our workflow, we check for code review. We do puppet link, R specs, and all the testing, all the proper testing, so we can ensure that our environments work perfectly from the beginning to the end. We don't want to uh, see, we don't want to see changes over the time that were not approved by the whole team. So we have some core modules that shouldn't be modified unless it, got, it gets approved by the operations team and other models that can be modified by anyone else in the, in the company. When we say, when we say about uh, core, core modules, we say that those are the models that are equal to each one of the systems. If there are some custom models for each one of the applications, the owners of those applications can modify it uh, easily. This is a little bit how how a repo looks like. So basically, if you see all of the data is in one, in one branch, and if you clone that branch at some point, you will be able to, to deploy a new environment with a different configuration, which is kind of easy. This is, this is exactly one of the, our, our workflows. Uh, for example, when you take the master branch, you create a feature branch, and then you merge it with a proper code review. This is basically what we use in all of our applications, and we want to extend that also to Puppet, because we want to treat Puppet as one of as another application inside our, our core. Um, at Trescale, uh, I arrived to Trescale in July, so one of my first tasks was moving Puppet from Puppet 2.7 to Puppet 3. We are now on Puppet 3.3.2. And we are running basically two Puppet Masters with Nginx and Unicorn. I've passed in the past two years from Passenger, Mongrel, and uh, Webrick, and I think that Unicorn is really reliable now. Our applications run on, Ru run Ruby, so on Ruby and Unicorn, so we want to extend that also to Puppet, uh, so we can have a homogeneous architecture. We, we are using a supply limit uh, of half of the room interval and a, 15 minutes supply. 
and we use the feature from Popper Tree, which 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 uses the DNS as SRV, which is kind of experimental, but for us it's been working really well, and it will ha it help us to have multiple masters, which is kind of useful and really easy to scale. We are using Foreman as our ENC. Um, basically. This is one of the reasons that we are using Puppet Master and not as everybody else that are using masterless Puppet. We want, we want to know the inventory of each one of the servers. We want to know all the information from all the servers. So we're using ENC. And we're going to implement PuppetDB in the next week, week and a half, the, because we were pretty, pretty busy doing all, all other stuff. Uh, we are heavy user, users of Hira. This uh, we're using M Collective, a Rabbit MQ4 orchestration, mainly because once you get your architecture gets really complex, or uh, after you get more than 60 servers, it's really uh, it's really a pain to manage all the puppets. So uh, M Collective makes it is, makes it easy, and also we're writing some of the plugins to manage all of our applications from from M Collective, which is really ha really handful. And this is more or less what we can what we want to achieve in the next in the next week we're gonna we're gonna have with Puppet DB. And basically what we have with Puppet, M Collective, RabbitMQ, and Puppet Masters. We have um two Puppet Master servers. We are uh, getting another one in another region at Amazon. We're using the SRV records on the SRV records and only one cer external certificate agent. Uh, we're using RabbitMQ as a cluster between all the Puppet Masters. And we're running M Collective on all the servers, on all the infrastructure. Um, what will probably nobody tell you about Puppet is Puppet Lint is your friend. Some people, st I can imagine some people that still don't know it. So please use it because it will help your code to be more uh, legible. And s when somebody else has look at your code, it will be uh, really helpful. Popper Respect is also your friend. People are, are, are testing their models, so why not use it? Don't go remotely on the servers. I've seen a, a lot of people directly getting into the Puppet Masters and coding models on the servers. This, if, if you do this, this is going to be a really pain for, because you won't have track of all the changes that you are doing. You cannot roll back. You cannot do a lot of things. Please use Git and to manage your code. Read the Puppet documentation every, on every version release because they got a lot of changes. Um, be careful at, at dependencies. And once you start puppetizing, you are becoming an addict. An addict so be careful. Um, um, basically, that's it for me. Any question? Yeah. It's really good. If, yeah. Yeah. I've been using M Collective. Uh, sorry, please yeah. repeat the question. Huh? Please repeat the question. Yeah, he's asking about if RabbitMQ is really reliable or not, basically, or if he shouldn't use it or not. Perhaps I can, I can, I can uh, explain it. Yeah. So our development department want to use M Collective, yeah. and we in the infrastructure, uh, we have different uh, DMZ zones, different infrastructure zones, etc. So, uh, how is M Collective securely deployed in such an uh, environment, or how it is maintained that I don't have security issues? For example, M Collective uh, uh, going behind the firewall, and uh, all servers I have all servers on one string. Uh, yeah. And I can manage them 
So we think it somehow, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> how do you manage with different steam sets and, and collective? Let's see. Um, we're having the, we have the same problem. Um, First, uh, when, when I was at Wacky.tv, we started using RabbitMQ because uh, mCollective because we had around 150 servers, and when we wanted to push to push any change on the on Puppet, we wanted to do all of them at once, or maybe to one environment or maybe to one host uh, in specific. So. We were using RBM to manage all the, the Ruby versions of our servers, and we were using mCollective to, with RabbitMQ to manage all the infrastructure, so we didn't have problems with the handsets. Um, RabbitMQ provides uh, SSL support, so you can have in communication, secure communication, and maybe you can configure that. But at the moment, we are not really we're not caring really much about that kind of security because we are behind firewalls and our, all of our network is behind the firewall at Amazon, so we are managing that between security groups. So we have a cluster of RabbitMQ between five, zone, five zones in Virginia and California, and we are not having any security breach at the moment. Anyone else? Any more questions? We have plenty of time, so uh, feel free to ask questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mentioned doing code reviews. Yeah. Doing a code review like a tool or just the GitHub URL? We are doing, we're doing it in GitHub uh, using pull requests. And all the team is involved in the code review of all the Puppet models and all the Puppet code. So basically, the idea is that Unless if it's a core module, everybody can push and merge all the pull requests to the master branch. If it's a core module, it only can be merged by, by the operations team. This way we ensure that nothing breaks. Anyone else? Questions? Okay, guess not then. Um, thank you for the presentation, enjoy. Um, we'll now have a break and then uh, start after it again with another presentation. Thank you.